What's up, everybody, and welcome to Around the Monitor for the week of March 21st. I'm your host, King Kaiser, and joining me once again, we've got Master Ham Mizuki. What's up? Stay safe. We've got the Ace Attorney, Dapper Dastard. This is me now. This is me. <laughs> uh, for audio I listeners. Somehow got, I, I somehow got stung by wasps literally five minutes into playing this game. Man, I do hate those white Anglo-Saxon Protestants. Next up, we've <laughs> got the snapshot crack shot the fisher king you know during these uncertain times it's good to remember that at least millions of americans are in debt to a raccoon (laughs) (laughs) and last but not least the hockey stick and sickle himself ian stay inside play some video games amen to that uh you might notice uh, a different background for me here that is because we are now recording in cincinnati ohio um Escape from New York, literally it just too, before it the. Was, it was too raw in here in New York. <laughs> well, I'm thankfully got out in time. They, they are now in lockdown, so uh, enjoy that. I guess you're in Jersey, so it's quite different. We're somewhat. also in lockdown. All right. <laughs> uh, but yes, fly, only a mile from the city. <laughs> if you did not know, this is the weekly gaming news talk show where every point you make in the discussion is a point towards winning. Remember, you can watch us live on twitch.tv slash King Kaiser every Thursday night at 7.30 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, if you can't catch us live, don't worry. You can watch us the next day on youtube.com slash around the monitor uh, as well as iTunes uh, podcasts. And if you do watch us live, you can actually uh, change the scores on the show by using the channel points on Twitch. So please get wild with it. Um, and most importantly... Fisher, he's a goddamn tanuki, not a raccoon. <laughs> Whatever. Listen, you plebe. the all balls the- on this guy. <laughs> yeah, I must say, all a tanuki means he has a giant set of balls. Um, I mean, and that's gotta, important. It is yeah, important. Well, um, all right, well, before the show, I did have a trivia question prep that was actually posted in the public document <laughs> like a complete rube. So, uh, instead of asking you all how many GameStop physical stores there are, I'm going to be asking you all, how many copies did Doom 2016 sell? Uh, because today, well, is it, is today the first day of Animal Crossing Doom or was it? Oh, technically we'll talk about it in a minute. Yeah. (laughs) It's a little squiffy. I'm going to go off on that topic. But, uh, yeah. How many, how many, how many top copies did Doom 2016 sell? Good question. <laughs> I'm gonna give it four point four million. Four point four. I'm gonna say three three point three point five. Right right in the middle. Three five. I was gonna go three six, but I'm gonna go two eight. Two eight. I'm gonna go uh five million eight hundred thousand and thirty. Alright, alright. The joke is that that was uh, very similar to the amount of uh, game stops. No, the correct answer is actually 3.6 million copies. Ooh, hey. I was going to say 3 cents. Yeah, you, when you said that, I was like, oh, my heart breaks I for was you. actually originally thinking closer to uh, Mizuki's number, and then you said five mil- or 4 million. I was like, all right, well, hold on. All right, so that means Fisher is going to be first. Uh, Mizuki, were you closer or less close than Ian? 2.8. So I think we're actually exactly the same. Was it? Uh, yeah, we're both we're both off by eight. All right, then. Uh, what is the Fight. exact what is the exact number of GameStop stores? Two thousand eight hundred thirty. Five thousand eight hundred thirty. It was Ian Mizuki. You're wrong. I know. I said two thousand. <laughs> as All soon right. as the words left my mouth, I was like, "Fuck." So the correct answer. So the order the order is going to be Fisher. That followed. needs to be our that needs to be our fallback question for any time we don't have one. <laughs> Just got to remember that exact number. Quick, number uh, of game stops. Go. <laughs> well, I'm sure it's going to change very quickly after this. <laughs> it will become a drastically lower number. Um, yeah. Ain't that the truth? Zero. So, It'll become zero. <laughs> so the order right now is going to be uh, Fisher followed by Ian, then Mizuki, and then Dapper. Uh, let's go through this week's topics. We've got Media Molecule kicks off a beta evaluation for commercial use of Dreams content, meaning users can possibly monetize things on Dream dreams uh then i have the let's bash gamestop power hour series of topics first off so a few days ago employees from gamestops basically put out a thing on uh basically saying they're super concerned the the head of management is not supplying them with enough stuff to stay safe 
uh, in regards to the coronavirus. And uh, yesterday it was announced that they were ignoring government uh, requirements that they had locked down and said that, no, we are, in fact, an essential uh, store to stay open during this uh, pandemic Fucking situation. Hog shit. <laughs> uh i'm gonna let if people want to treat those as separate topics or as same topics they can um we've have gamestop decided to sell doom eternal actually a day early to help break up crowds from animal crossing which released on the same day or was planned to release on the same day square enix says there'll be no delay for final fantasy 7 remake but that physical copies might not arrive on time uh same with animal crossing my question to you all is will this drive more digital sales uh, in the short term, yes. end up killing more, uh, killing physical media faster in the long term. Uh, we've got the the great reveal of PlayStation and Xbox specs for next gen. It's a numbers game, but there's also some some more fine details in there if you want to get into Terra that. Teraflops. Teraflops. Uh, in in addition to that, the PlayStation devs say that the uh, SSD that's in the PlayStation 5 is, quote, the biggest leap in their career, which is kind of a crazy statement to think about it. But there is reasonings, I suppose. And then for our memes and a dreams topic of the week, the Phoenix Suns are going to continue playing their canceled basketball season at NBA 2K on Twitch. That might be my favorite topic we've ever had. <laughs> uh, also, Ring Fit Adventure is now selling out across the United States. Ubisoft CEO, in a stark contrast to uh, GameStop's management, sends out a really nice message to uh, the staff of Ubisoft across the world. And uh, last but not least, in our coronavirus news... GDC announces uh, new dates for August, uh, but do we think that even this will happen? All right, Fisher, you are up first. Where would you like to start this week's show? We are going to just jump right into the GameStop hatred. <laughs> uh, and I, particularly just to limit it a bit because there's just so much GameStop There is hatred. a lot. I'm going to talk about the uh, Doom Eternal uh, selling a day early to break up crowds. Perfect. Break it down. So, uh initially people were tongue-in-cheek mad about this because um <laughs> they're the, the 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 great trans genre marketing of animal crossing and doom as mm. like buddy games is simply fantastic mm. um but uh then that 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 false like tongue-in-cheek rage turned into genuine rage mm. um as they so th so the idea here is great they're gonna you know we're gonna make it so less people in the store less people like we get coronavirus the world dies a little bit less awesome uh except ga except many game stops across the country also uh decided to move street date for animal crossing one day forward mm. oh they did in, in such locations as new york city <laughs> <laughs> where there's only a few people and nothing to worry about <laughs> Um, oh no! And this just ties into the overall complete and utter mismanagement that is going on at GameStop right mm -hmm. now, um, and where honestly, genuinely, they should be punished for this. Mm -hmm. This is a crime against humanity, basically, <laughs> um, and it, an incredible uh, violation of just like health codes and everything. Um, also, I don't like le legally. Can they do that? <laughs> Uh, Can you just do that? Hypothetically, it's legal. It's more of would they get uh, blacklisted by companies, get get punished by game developers and publishers. Right, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, my, my the main thing here is that this is some hot bullshit. And uh, <laughs> that's not the main thing, but it is some hot bullshit. Mm -hmm. uh, and I I genuinely like the idea of hey let's let let's not have games released in the same day because it causes a rush and it causes unnecessary stress and it causes the workers who are at the GameStop to be even more stressed. Mm. Um, then just arbitrarily cha changing game release dates this close to launch is not good. It in fact it only causes confusion for everyone involved, including consumer and GameStop employee, which is just bad overall. And not only and like the GameStop employees are already pissed and overworked and underpaid, so let's just add more confusion, to strife, and now have people coming in on the wrong day to be mad at them. Yeah, this is a bad idea. I, I this, this is a the good concept with like the worst execution imaginable. I only hope that they actually kept the pre-orders for the people who had them pre-order for the first oh, I'm, day. I'm certain they did. I don't know. I've I've heard people, I mean, not for this case, but I've heard people who had pre-orders and they were like, oh, we, we gave away 
all of our copies for games before because because they came like a day late and they were like oh well we we thought you'd be here on the first day and when you weren't we just sold it but i mean that could be individual cases but who knows shit's wild stay safe y'all don't go to gamestop (laughs) um (laughs) ian uh you're up next what which topic would you like to take you know what fuck it don't go to GameStop. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Me too. Uh, don't fucking stay in open. Uh, I think, so, the basic story here is GameStop says, oh, we're a central business, mm. so we're going to stay open during the coronavirus mm-hmm. uh, lockdown. Mm-hmm. I think the most heinous part of this, maybe the most heinous, um, obviously, just staying open in general is terrible, but <laughs> they put out a memo to their employees that if the cops come and say, hey, you need to shut down, that it's the employee's responsibility to argue with the cops that yeah. they're an essential business, that they need to stay open. Yeah. And that seems illegal. It seems very illegal. And I think it's kind of part of it is just what uh what Fisher you were saying, which is if they close down they're not going to reopen. Mm. Yeah. GameStop is on its deathbed, so corporate is just saying, fuck it, we can take the fines, we can take uh, every one of our employees being extremely mad at us, <laughs> but because the the other scenario is, we're all, you know, GameStop's dead. Mm. Which we're all out of probably jobs. is a good thing. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, it's absolutely unacceptable to force your employees to go head to head with the cops Mm. (laughs) (laughs) i don't know yeah it's a bold (laughs) statement (laughs) man when you say it like that it really (laughs) puts it in perspective doesn't it yeah um and the reasoning is it's not that video games are essential it's that they sell um like communication equipment which Mm. they barely (laughs) <laughs> yeah which is like just some fucking hogwash no you don't you sell like one single microphone in your entire store and the rest is just fucking funko pops <laughs> yeah esen- essential funko pops you know i gotta have my pops fuck <laughs> <laughs> even if that was true there's so many other places that you can get them <laughs> Even this is... if that was true. <laughs> Even if that lie was true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Game yeah. Shop out here pretending to get like Best Buy or some shit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this but, like, is true. It's usually like, a section of a grocery store that has other things. You know, get it there. Fuck it. This is a good point. Yeah. Best, Best Buy has a better case to stay open than GameStop. Yeah, they, they sell general technological goods. Yeah. 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 Everyone knows like a 40 year old office worker wants to buy the gamer quality head headphones. <laughs> no, listen. he wants the cheap you, office depot shit. You gotta get you gotta get the headphones with like the skull on the side like I have. That lets yeah. you know that you fucking give a shit. <laughs> you need that your turtle that... beaches. If it's not Turtle Beach, it's <laughs> if it's not Turtle Beach, it's arguably a better piece of technology. <laughs> no, 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 not arguable. It is a better piece of technology. <laughs> if they want a cost-efficient quality headset, try the Logitech G340. <laughs> also, Logitech will sponsor us. I would 100 percent take that. <laughs> God damn, Logitech I mean, hit me up. My webcam sponsor. Uh, Same. Logitech, my headset, my he- my camera and headsets. Yeah. Like, so. my wheel. yeah get this get this get this guy a a, a car logitech please <laughs> logitech uh car <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't download a car yes i would if i could i would 100 yeah, percent. god damn watch me um <laughs> mizuki where would you like to take us for your first topic Oh my god! A weird energy this week. Uh, I'm loving These it. News stories are mostly shit shows. Um, okay. <laughs> Reliant K says you let's... wouldn't download a car. Let's talk PlayStation Five next gen specs. Ooh, heck yeah! Give me, give me the deets. So play. Oh, well, I guess and Xbox too. Yeah, PlayStation and Xbox both revealed 
the majority of their specs for the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X, respectively, mm -hmm. in completely opposite ways. Very. Xbox was very, like, not dumb, and they just released theirs through the press and are like, hey, here's specs. Mm -hmm. Analyze these how you want. Make a new story. <laughs> go. Go forth. Mm -hmm. Have fun. Just mm -hmm. release it. We're not going to build hype. Just it's out there in the wild. Cool. Because mm -hmm. most people will read 12 this point whatever worse. teraflops and be like, so many flops. And that's about as that's deep as flops. they know. Now, PlayStation. Oh, PlayStation. <laughs> oh, PlayStation. PlayStation decided to be dumb as fuck. Mm. So while simultaneously being smart as fuck, it was weird. PlayStation yeah. had Mark Cerny give a really weird, fake, real at the same time presentation <laughs> mm -hmm. like i think the podium was real it was and that was it <laughs> the rest everything was else was was fake including the audience that including, they put in there yes. including mark cerny <laughs> <laughs> he was kind of a robot so maybe yeah. uh <laughs> but basically mark cerny got up there and talked for 52 minutes about playstation 5 specs in what was a gdc talk this yes. was a talk that was originally supposed to be at gdc it was clearly geared towards gdc mm -hmm. it was deep dives into specs and mm -hmm. how they're architecting everything and playstation actually hyped this up on like their twitter and they other did. sources yeah they're like, yeah go watch this and then yeah. me and a bunch of other people tuned in and were like no i could take a nap like if i just yeah. played this on my google home and like had that going in the background, I'd be able to fall asleep real fast because Mark <laughs> Cerny's voice is calming, if anything. You know, he should really do audiobooks because, goddamn, he he's should. Got a, or ASMR. Yes. <laughs> he should not do presentations. <laughs> Get him to guest on uh, Sleep With Me. <laughs> like, I guess, in summary, though, like, Xbox specs arguably slightly better than PS5, not by leaps and bounds. Yeah. It's honestly closer than i thought it would because i thought mm. the series x was supposed to be a higher end box and ps5 more generic so yeah. they're closer than i thought there's another story for the ssd maybe we'll do that later but yeah my question to you uh Mizuki, do you think they're going to be sold at comparable prices even though xbox I got think, those flops i think ps5 has to be equal or cheaper if ps5 comes out more expensive they're fucked Mm. I, I say fuck they're not fucked there's enough ps like playstation fanboys to still yeah sell enough consoles that they're not going to be screwed but yeah uh, I th I, yeah it, it's going to be interesting to see who starts at a deficit uh because i think i think both sides can kind of make up ground but like, and i think that's largely why we haven't heard a price yet yeah. is mm. primarily due to both of them being gun shy about it they're so yeah. afraid to tell us the price. They're so Cause, afraid. Because I think both of them, like literally Xbox and PlayStation are just, they're both waiting. Like someone's yeah. going to pull the trigger first and then they're like, we're going to undercut them by 50 bucks and yeah. that's it. it. It's a thing where it, it's wild now too because I think uh, due to the global pandemic going on, the economy is about to get dunked on. Fucked. Uh, yep, yep. so who is going to have $500 plus waiting to drop on a console come November? <sighs> uh, we'll see, but we don't, we go and see. Yeah. Uh, Dapper, where would you like to take us for your, uh, first topic? All right. I'm going to jump on, uh, the Phoenix Sun story. <laughs> yeah. Tell us about where we can catch our basketball for the rest of the year. <laughs> all right so as everyone knows uh a lot of sports are being canceled mm -hmm. well all sports are being canceled. All <laughs> well no actually league of legends is back because esports are the future baby mm -hmm. um but digressing <laughs> from that point uh most sports uh, events have been canceled or postponed nba season suspended march madness was canceled start of baseball suspended yada 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 mm -hmm. uh, but for those who are missing the basketball mm -hmm. Uh, the Phoenix Suns have announced that they are going to play some of their canceled NBA games. And mm -hmm. they are going to play those canceled NBA games on NBA 2K20, <laughs> live streamed on Twitch. Mm -hmm. uh, starting with their game against the Mavericks. Uh, I believe I think it's tomorrow's game, actually. Um, Hell yeah, let's tune in and watch this. 
Genuinely might. Let's yeah. let's live stream over this. <laughs> um, but this is this is in all honesty a really really hilarious and clever thing to do. Um, we already know there's a decent amount of NBA players who like game and a lot who actually enjoy the NBA 2K games. Mm-hmm. You always get some jokes about guys talking about their in-game ratings uh, yeah. <laughs> and shit like that. So it, 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 it makes me worth a lot of good fun at times. But um, again, th- this is honestly just a really fun thing they're doing to try and just, you know, do some, try and keep fans involved, help mm. provide some people with boredoms. It, it's it's going to be like goofy and a total shit show because, again, they're not a streaming group. It's an NBA team. <laughs> uh, but I, I appreciate the use of some thinking outside of the box to try and provide us some entertainment in a time when some people are going to be super bored. Uh, so this, I, I might check this out. This looks, it, it could be pretty fun. Um, I hope some other teams get on the trend too. And they maybe be, teams try to actually play against each other. That would be amazing. Uh, for a season. That, that would honestly be really funny. <laughs> get some get some good natured trash talk going. A bunch of guys who aren't even good at games. Just like suddenly, trying to fucking play an NBA suddenly, so, so suddenly the actual sports pros start becoming esports players. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then the next year we make uh the league of legends pros start playing basketball fucking anarchy oh i would watch that so like <laughs> oh my god would i watch that i would pay that so much so, money is it question so is it clear like who on the team is playing this game or are they all like passing uh, a controller or what's going on apparently this was last saturday oh so can probably find it in a VOD somewhere and yeah, figure well. that out. Well, um, a, a similar thing happened. Uh, so Formula One has been canceled up till June, I believe. Uh, interesting. So I think it was like six or seven drivers, like Formula One drivers, teamed up with a bunch of like streamers and YouTube people, uh, and played the uh, Australian Grand Prix in Formula One 2020. This <laughs> is the fucking future, and I'm not even joking. It's really this cool. Amazing. <laughs> I mean, here's the thing: if they get if they get the best gamer wheel, then are they not just in effect playing <laughs> racing for real? Available from our from our friends at Logitech. <laughs> Listen, listen. They're no longer being sponsored by Cheetos. They're being sponsored by Logitech. Every single one of them. No, they all get sponsored by Logitech, Doritos, and Mountain Dew. Done. Fuck. We're Gamer done fuel. God <laughs> damn it. <laughs> the holy trinity. Uh, all right. <laughs> Moving it back around again. Uh, Fisher, it's your pick. What would you like to go with next? Um, hmm. It's a good question. These are all very good, but most of the fun topics have already been taken. So let's talk about Media Molecule uh, taking mm. their beta evaluation of commercial commercial digestive use, which is the grossest term yeah. I've ever heard for a video game thing ever. I, if you make a vor joke right now, I'm going to be so mad at you. I won't do that. Okay, thank because you. Because I'm a man of honor. Coward. <laughs> I'm also a coward. Um, so, uh, Media Molecule announces that their client, uh, Dreams, which you, if you haven't heard, it's actually good. We were wrong. Fucking shocker. God, we suck. Okay. Um, Side note, really quick. Uh, it was not in the, not even in the top 20 games sold in February. That's a damn shame. It fucking sucks. I uh, mean... I don't think that's all that surprising. I know, but that fucking sucks. (laughs) (laughs) I I think this will be a more like overtime selling thing. I also think that Mm. it's going to be, you need, we need some fucking streamer to uh, Mm. like make this streamer, make this Twitch bait for a month. Yeah. And then then it sells a bajillion copies, like fucking everything. Just got to get Dr. Um, Disrespect in there. Yeah. Or anyone else. Really. Yeah. That'd be yeah. fine. Let's fact, let's let's prefer, let's preferably someone else. In fact, in fact not Dr. Disrespect. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I just distracted you for a minute. Yeah, it's fine. Um, anyway, uh, yeah. So uh, this is actually like in a, a very strange pro. It's weird because it's, it's, it's kind of pro consumer. It, yeah. It's, it's pro consumer. It's pro consumer in the sense that like the guys who are actually making content in this game, it's really awesome for them, and they can actually like possibly make money. It's a, what a concept! Um, People who make games making money. Have you not know, watched right? this show ever? 
developers don't deserve anything. Well, he's only the executives that deserve things. Um, uh, th this could, in theory, like, so Dreams is that weird, in that weird state where it's kind of hovering on being a big deal, mm. where, like, there, and not enough, like, awesome stuff has been made in it yet, but it's probably going to be with, like, mm. the, the crazy amount of, like, dev work, and, like, guys that are just, like, dicking around in Dreams. Mm -hmm. Um and this is just another like thing onto the pile of like this could actually end up being a really big deal if 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 Dreams manages to make itself into a platform that allows people to make their own games and then distribute those own games and possibly even sell those games if they're ex exceptionally good. That's basically what the Unreal Engine was supposed mm. to be, and you know never was because fucking Epic Games is like give me all that give me all that cash, baby. Mm -hmm. Um. But uh, with like, so I've been following Dreams somewhat closely. I haven't actually purchased it yet. I really need to because it's like the, the amount of stuff in there is really interesting. Um, well, we got it now. I, it's I, time. Uh, yeah, seriously. I, I genuinely think that this it is a matter of time. And also, we, yeah, it's weirdly enough, like with the coronavirus, these people that have dicking, like, are dicking around in Dreams have so much time to stay home and work on Dreams. Um, that yeah. like, th Dreams is basically one big cool game away from blowing everyone the fuck away and everyone mm -hmm. being like, oh shit, I got to get Dreams. I think I think going into the next gen, because uh, I I hundred percent intend to pick pick it up on the PS five once I get it. But yeah. but also like I mean it'll be a great patchwork for like when there's all when you you have your PS five and there's no fucking exclusives out because it's the beginning of the console yeah. cycle. Yeah, yeah. Once you finish Horizon One Dawn, just load up Dreams. One thing I want to bring up, just three <laughs> seconds Worst, maybe, is. Maybe dreams is going to be an incredible teaching tool going down yes it's yeah. a good point like we talked about it in my class uh before the whole lockdown thing happened of my teachers like yo if any guys check this out it's amazing mm. we're gonna use this mm. in the future like this is where we're going to teach people how to make games long before they learn how to code or anything yeah so i think I, dreams awesome. tale what was it Shuhei said it's like a 10 year game i think it's a 20 year game where people learn mm -hmm. stuff in dreams and become developers because of it yeah and if they can find a way to like make that engine pliable and to like, even to making a second engine with like just the same concepts but more options that's like that's we we've, you've become the new unreal engine yeah yeah i fully expect this to be released on pc in like five years time mm. where people can actually like go wild with it I don't. Some of the res restrictions. I think that it's intentionally not that. Mm. And the uh, I don't know how much you've seen of it, Ian, but a lot of it is heavily controlled with like the move controllers oh, yeah. and stuff too. Oh, yeah. mm. It's very, it, it's super movement based. You can use either the VR move controllers or you can actually use the movement capabilities of the PS. So, like six axis Reliant, control. Yeah. Reliant K fan in the chat says, "Dreams the next Minecraft." In a way, yes. <laughs> That's what he but says. Minecraft in a way. <laughs> not in the like because Minecraft, most people use it to almost create art or like yeah, architecture and stuff. Like, are you calling video yeah. games not art? Because I swear to God. <laughs> but I mean like right now, uh, <laughs> Minecraft has like code blocks and stuff, which are closer to game development. Mm, yeah. Good point. Good point. So in that sense, yes. Hmm. Hmm. Well, we'll see. I hope. Uh, I I really do hope that that dreams does pay off for Media Molecule, not just in a content creation way, but in a uh, financial way, because I think they deserve it. Uh, Ian, you're up next. Which topic would you like to pick? Sure. Uh, yeah, I'll go with uh, Ring Fit. Heck yeah! Tell us how to get so, cut in the apocalypse. Ring Fit is uh, it's toilet paper now. <laughs> <laughs> all right uh, that was a good joke hey -o. <laughs> basically people can't be going to the gym mm. uh so why not get fit in uh in on your switch mm. really uh i don't have a switch i haven't gotten the game but uh, everything i've heard about it is that this is a really good tool uh it m makes you want to keep playing and <laughs> the the ring thing along with the exercises actually works out really well. It's yeah, I've heard that it's actually good exercise, which is wild yeah. to me. It's not bad. I, I used it the other day before I left New York. I was like, this is a nice workout. I forgot about it's this good, thing. It's good stuff. It's good stuff. I, I, do it about, I do it about two times a week. It's yeah. good stuff. It's tough, too. So now everyone is uh, running out to GameStop. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> to go 
Okay. GameStop, I assure you, are open. <laughs> um, so I I just want to give a little story here, um, hmm. along with a little piece of news, which is, uh, there was a couple that went to a GameStop and said, "Give us all your Ring Fits," and they had like yeah. three in the store. And then they they went up to the counter, got all the ring fits, and then said, "Hey, can you call all the other game stops in the city?" No way. Uh, and ask them how many ring fits they have. What the fuck? So so the employees did, uh, and they said, oh, "Okay, no. put them on hold." And then they went around and they bought up every ring fit. In so they the, were the uh, in the city. The uh, hand sanitizer guy. Mm hmm. But with ring fits. Hmm. Uh, oh. And yeah, and now according to this article, they're selling like 120 to 160 for a copy. Whereas MSRP those bastards, bucks, right? Uh, I think it's 80. 80? Mm -hmm. okay. 80, yeah. Yeah. Well, considering that that's not for public resale, they better hope that no one decides to fucking sue them. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. Ooh, um, yeah. Reliant K fam just redeemed a point. Uh, basically, how this works is you redeem the point, you use the, the points to re redeem a point. A lot of points. And basically, you just tell me who you want to give the point to, and it gets added to their score. Mm -hmm. uh, that's fucking wild, Ian. Um, I guess I'm not yeah. surprised, but I hadn't heard about this. Yeah, I hadn't heard about yeah. this. What Would you know what city they're based in? Um, I don't. I think it might have been, like, fucking Duluth or something. Uh. If I'm, or, like... <laughs> Some Des Moines, like a big, a biggish city in the middle of nowhere, is mm. what I remember. Mm. Mm. Des Moines, Iowa, the elephant city. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, uh, you know, these people are 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 withholding the right to become swole, and you got to pay the Pied Piper to get jacked. You know. Mm -hmm. All right, well, that, that's all I had. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's <all> <laughs> that joke uh, was my whole thing so yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh music you, you got a, a second topic you like to pick yeah you know let's let's cheer someone who actually did something cool i'm gonna talk about ubisoft ceo yves hey, gilmore yeah my good yeah. boy my, my my boy eve all right so eve gilmore basically sent out a an email to the entire Ubisoft company saying mm. like, Hey, like stay safe. We're, we're going to figure this out. We've got money in this, in like our coffers so that we're not going to go out of business anytime soon from like not getting sales or something like mm. we'll be okay. It'll be fine. Stay safe. Don't get sick. All that jazz. Mm -hmm. Go home, play some ghost recon. <laughs> <laughs> Please. They need it. <laughs> ghost recon's dying um oh, no but boy. like this was this is how it should be mm. this is what you should be doing if you're fucking gamestop except gamestop so in the shitter that they can't <laughs> like this is what you should be doing and i'm not, not even just like games entire company like any company mm. should unless you're if you're a mom and pop shop no i don't expect you to have the capability to not be open for six months and be fine but yeah. like if you're a big multi-billion dollar company you should have enough in reserves to not go out of business mm, if you're a like, multi-billion dollar company <laughs> fuck you <laughs> if you're the american airline industry you should have enough money in your coffers so that god damn you know it. if because there's a pandemic or you know there were another like terrorist strike and people weren't flying again you wouldn't go out of business in like a month. That's that seems like a no brainer to me. Yeah, that, like individuals are expected to have three to six months worth of emergency funds ready, and yeah. companies are not. That's kind of some bullshit. Some yeah. bullshit. Like that's not okay. So I just want to cheer on Ubisoft on this one. I know they are probably the most. I don't want to say they're like the most polar. They go, they're totally one way or the other, man. They, they yeah. only have good or bad. They never have okay. There's no yeah. middle. Yeah. It's either we're doing great shit, support us, we're doing fantastic, or it's Ghost Recon Breakpoint. There's yeah. no <laughs> in between. How you gonna do them like that? Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's rich. You know what? Real talk. 
how happy do you think they are that the, that the Division 2's like New York pandemic DLC happened like four months ago? Oh yeah, very. Can They're you imagine? <laughs> can you imagine a world where they I dropped mean, that DLC this week? <laughs> that's the entire Division game, though. Is yeah, a yeah, pandemic happened. Yeah. So like at this point. Anything with the Division Two, people probably don't want to touch it. Yeah. Yeah. Even yeah. if they come out with a new DLC. But then people, again, like people aren't gonna want to touch it. Playing, everyone's been playing fucking Plague Inc. Like that's a good point. A pandemic board game. So maybe people want it. Yeah. I feel like those are very different from those. You're kind of separated. Like, yeah, you're controlling the virus in that case. Mm. But in the Division, you're actually like living in the world ravaged by pandemic where mm. everyone's locked in their homes and you're a special agent in the street shooting a bunch of people that are like killing everyone yeah. one of those is a little more closer to reality than the other two that's true yes it's it's it's, it's, it's a wild world ubisoft <laughs> made corona no no relying k that is not <laughs> no. what we're saying no <laughs> oh that's not what we're saying that's not what we're saying. Honestly, that's that's what I'm saying starting right now. <laughs> Hi, welcome to my TED Talk. Uh, well, I'm in on this conspiracy theory. Let's go. Eve Gimmel, you heard it here first, started the Corona coronavirus. It's just, it's just viral marketing. Hey. No, if anyone did it, it's Capcom. Oh, Fuck God, you for that, that was that good. Was, uh, I'll give you a point for that. Uh, Dapper, that good and bad. give us the final topic of this week. Alright, guys, do we want to talk about GDC still trying to happen, or Final Fantasy VII not being, not having enough copies? What do we want I to think, talk about? I think, I think there's more to run on with the idea that physical sales might die faster because of the coronavirus. Mm-hmm. Then let's go with it. Okay. So, uh, the Final Fantasy remake is not going to be delayed, and is and Square Enix still intends for it to come out on its April 10th uh, release date. Mm. What they have warned, though, is obviously, well, I'm going to say obviously, that there may not be enough physical copies for everyone who pre-ordered them, due to, obviously, a lot of things being slowed up because of uh, COVID-19. Mm-hmm. So, what really, what, what I think, obviously, and what you mentioned is what we're mostly this article to talk about is a lot of people will switch, will try and refund any physical order they made Mm -hmm. and just buy it digitally. Mm -hmm. And as you've been seeing more and more, people are starting to switch a lot more to buying games digitally. I mean, you know, for last gen systems, this really wasn't a thing you even thought about. And I feel like a little under half my switch games are digital uh, in some way, especially as, especially smaller indie games that you're not usually going to really find in stores that much. They're mm-hmm. just easier and cheaper and they don't take up much space to yeah, just grab off the, to just grab off the eShop. Mm-hmm. So this is definitely going to swing people even more into that. Cause it is one of the convenient parts about digital say about digital sales is mm-hmm. that you don't have to worry about supply. You can guarantee you again, the, the minute that release date hits, they're going to unlock they're going to unlock that ability. Most games, you can pre-download most games, so you don't even have to wait. It's literally the second that, again, last night, the second midnight hit, I could have started playing Animal Crossing if I wanted to. Mm-hmm. I could have Not necessarily. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you get the general point. Yeah. Yes. I did it because I had to go to work on Friday, but that's not the point. <laughs> um, the point is that as we start to see more and more the convenience and the accessibility of digital sales, are we even gonna, is physical media even still going to exist? Mm. And the answer is yes. Mm-hmm. I mean, ebooks have existed for years on years and uh, people still buy physical copies of books. That's still a thing. Because yeah, fuck ebooks. I, I think, I think <laughs> this is obviously going to help the trend, but I, the idea that it's going to kill physical media, not really. Hmm. It's going to obviously shift some perspective, but there's still always going to be people who like to have a physical copy of things. It feels more secure. It's more of a collector thing if you like display collections and things like that. So it it's still always going to have a place, but this, again, is one of those things that does adjust <laughs> people's thinking to, bless you, now to more, the value more, of digital sales. More importantly, will this kill GameStop? 
games we, i think we've i think at this point we, it's pretty it's pretty reasonable to say gamestop's already dead and not even <laughs> I don't think GameStop's going to survive coronavirus. No, no, I think GameStop is going to die and we're all going to be a little better off, better yeah, off yeah. once that happens. It's it's it, It'll make me a little bit sadder that if I want to buy a physical copy, I'll probably go to a, a Walmart or a Target, but mm-hmm. I'll survive. Also, I, I also totally buy everything digital these days, but that's just because I ain't got space for those super tiny boxes. Still don't have space for them because New York City apartments, man. Oh, um, I have a question to posit real fast related to this. Sure. So anecdotally, I canceled my physical Final Fantasy VII pre-order in order to get the digital one because mm-hmm. I want to play it release day. Mm-hmm. Do you think companies will switch to more like when you buy a physical copy, you get a code for the same copy via digital? Nope. Uh, I think that would be a I think genius that'd be smart, idea. Yeah. If if they could guarantee that if you put that disc in, then once that code has been renewed or uh, code has been used, redeemed, I guess yeah. redeemed. Thank you. Uh, that that disc would be nothing. Then sure. I feel like there are a billion ways that people can work around that. So no. Yeah, but if you look at PC gaming, it's been like what eight years since you've been able to get basically anything physical. Oh, for sure. Steam just killed it, and I think with this and with the new generation and everything, physical games are just going to die very quickly. I I think this will speed it up a little bit. I definitely think we still have a few years. Whether or not I think that's a good thing, we'll see. Uh, An interesting topic we didn't get into with uh, PlayStation was saying that you're going to basically be able to download games super fast now with the SSD, which is a little squiffy, but uh, basically because now when you download them, you then have to wait for it to install afterwards, and it's basically going to do both at the same time. And on top of that, it'll it, it'll be able to download just the part of the game that you want, so you won't have to download the multiplayer if you don't want to play the multiplayer. You just download the single player first, and then later download the multiplayer in the background, which that's is great. Fuck. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we'll we'll see. I'm I'm excited for for new tech, but uh, <laughs> yeah, Reliant K. Just give just say a person's name to give the points to them. You don't have to redeem <laughs> the points. Uh, but we're just gonna go ahead and go with as the points as they are now. So that means Mizuki, Dapper, and Fisher. It's time to go home and become a family man because this week's winner is. Ian, are you uh, ready for your minute to win it? Ian? I can make something up off the top. Please, you got, you got, you got so much to talk about. Oh yeah, take it away. All right. Uh, what I think I'll talk about is the fucking Fast and Furious movie. I just finished like ten minutes before we started uh, recording the uh, Hobbs and Shaw. These movies are fantastic. The first four are good. Uh, and then you get to five, which is probably the best action movie I've ever seen. Everything after that is not quite as good as five, but you gotta watch these because they're just hilarious and intense and the best action you've ever seen. Uh, fucking Luke Hobbs, who's Dwayne The Rock Johnson, every single line out of his mouth is like rib-bustingly hilarious. Uh, he's definitely the best character, but they've got so much heart along with just so much action and everything just comes together really nicely uh, to make a good movie about family. It's all about family. It's all about family. Um, <laughs> That's why he put his his actual uh, family in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> Relent Cape, a uh, fan in the chat says, has this man not seen Mad Max Fury Road? Mad Max Fury oh. Road is also very good. Fun fact, I actually just watched that for the first time last night. It is a very good movie. It's so fucking good, dude. It's, that honestly really might good. be. I, I'm watching uh, I'm watching the guys who do Cinema Sins do a uh, best decade of the movie bracket, hmm. and I honestly think it's a good chance Fury Road wins. Baby Driver, baby. Baby Ooh, Driver. That one was yeah. good. I love that Baby Driver movie. was amazing. Hmm. Amazing. Good movie. Uh, very good movie. Yeah. Well, you next like th- basically car porn. Next time on Around the Cinema, we'll talk about what our best movies of uh, the last decade were. But for this time, 
<laughs> uh, anything else to plug this week, guys? Uh, oh, Anim- Animal Crossing New Horizons. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. We're not paying I'm for that. Actually, <laughs> I've been streaming again. Come watch Twitch oh. TV slash Mizuki. I play right. Animal Crossing and Doom Eternal right now. Oh, heck yeah. <laughs> um, I'm on a lot of streams nowadays, but I'm not plugging them. <laughs> Fuck those um, people. Important to note, too, uh, Mizuki did have a video up on the channel uh, this last week on the Golden Age of Video Games. I highly recommend watching it because uh, it kind of changed my opinion on what I think the Golden Age of Games was. Um, Dapper or Ian, anything to plug from you guys? I said my piece. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, plug, I'll, movies. I'll plug social distancing. Oh, uh, As long as you don't plug Beastars again, I'm fine with it. Oh hey, uh, you should watch Beastars on Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> Beastars too. You, you should you should follow my Twitter, which I renamed to Beastars Stan account. <laughs> God damn it! When's uh, Beastars two, you cowards? It's coming. It, it's it's getting a second season. Oh wow! Okay, there we go. Um. All right. Well, I think uh, I think that's gonna do it this week. I guess. Obviously, we got delayed. I mean, meaning around the monitor as a whole from this whole situation. I'm expecting to do a video this week. If it comes out, it, it's bare minimum going to be up on uh, Sunday night. Not Sunday night, but Sunday. So we'll see. We'll see. But until next time, this has been Around the Monitor. <laughs>